we have changed our design, we've been able to reduce our price to help continue to make technology affordable. When we go forward and we start seeing a massive explosion in artificial intelligence and robotics and 5G, which is this whole machine to machine, which is you know, going to double the amount of data on the planet every eight months, that same principle will apply. So welcome back to the Cyrus One Connects podcast. My name's Matthew Pullen, EVP and Managing Director Europe at Cyrus One. The topic for today is the data center of the future. And we're extremely privileged to debate the topic with Dave Ferdman, founder, former CEO and board director at Cyrus One. So Dave, you must be seriously proud of what you've achieved in establishing Cyrus One as a company regarded as one of the largest global providers of colo services having started the business just 20 years ago. Thanks for inviting me to your Cyrus One podcast. And yes, I'm very proud, very proud of the team, very proud of you know what has transpired over the last uh, 20 years. But more importantly, uh, what we're about to embark upon in, in the next 10 years is, is insane. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing how what the growth we're seeing is actually coming to fruition and what we've talked about for years. So thanks for having me, excited to talk about it. A lot of people are saying it's difficult for Colo to keep pace. How would you respond to that in the context of the Cyrus One portfolio in the US and Europe? It is going to be tough to keep pace. The demand is, is so significant across so many different secular demand contributors that keeping pace in a non-sustainable world would be difficult. But see, keeping pace in a world where sustainability is front center and top of list on everyone's agenda Having sustainable, scalable data center capacity is going to be difficult. And while we're a large platform, uh, it's going to be difficult for us. So uh, it's, it's certainly a challenge. Uh, it's a challenge we're excited about. But nonetheless, nobody is thinking about this as, uh, as, as, as a layup. It's, it's going to be tough. And, and moving away from the US and Europe, how do you respond to that in the context of the opportunities in other territories that arguably have, you know, are a few years behind certainly the US, such as LATAM and Asia Pacific? Well, I think the same pattern we saw where Europe caught up to the US as far as growth is now going to be happening and is happening in LATAM and in APAC. And fundamentally, what we're seeing is the same challenges. It's difficult to procure utility. It's difficult to procure land. It's difficult to find places where all of your moons and stars align with respect to latency um, and, and, and all the other components that we look for for a big scale sustainable opportunity. And so I believe Latin America is right on the heels of Europe. Uh, and I think Asia Pacific is, is, is in line and we're gonna see exploding growth over the next five years. I think we're gonna see 40 to 50% you know, growth and those markets are, are gonna be leading the way from a percentage perspective. Oh, that's, I mean, those are amazing numbers. Um, but you've mentioned a few times the notion of scale. So are you saying that really the only way of keeping up with demand is through developing at scale? Is that what we're saying? That is what we're saying. And we are seeing that where our customers are requiring larger and larger and larger capacities. And fundamentally, uh, they are building out larger network nodes within these uh, data centers. And so um, what happens is the larger the network node, the more compute you can put into that facility. And so we're seeing step functions that we've never even envisioned before. And fundamentally, if you think about the next 10 years, uh, there's no way to do that without massive scale. So the sites you're picking, Matt, over in Europe, and I'd love to you know, turn it on you, you know, when you are all looking, when the team is looking in Europe, you certainly have a completely different profile, I would assume, than you did five years ago. And so you know, imagine, imagine trying to do that in some of the countries in Latin America and Asia Pacific. Yeah, Dave, I agree with that. So I guess we've seen in Europe it following the U.S., Average size of data center, maybe the beginning of the hyperscale phase started at 10 meg. We're now at 30 to 40, but with a runway required by most customers, hyperscale customers to, to 60. 
Meg, on the same site. So I agree. But you touched on a few really interesting issues to do with the headwinds that might make developing at scale difficult. And you touched on three things in particular. Firstly, the competitive landscape for land. Secondly, the limited availability of power. And thirdly, supply chain issues. And I guess that really relates to, to OFCI, um, which is the operator facilitated contractor installed. So the ME equipment, essentially. So those three things, do you mind just commenting on how you see headwinds relative to those? You know, what we look for, and I'll, I'll speak about Cyrus One because I, I certainly couldn't speak on behalf of my peers, is we are focused on the key digital gateway markets. So we're focused on the biggest markets where we know data gravity is happening. We know explosive demand is, is not going away. When we are focused on these markets, obviously we are not the only ones focused on these markets. So the, the demand for the similar portions of land is going up. Um, and so when you think about that, prices are going up and, 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 and you have to be more and more creative. And, and Matt, look, your team has, you know, an insane and amazing background in, in, in real estate. And that's, that's the first piece. It's land. It's the first domino in the chain. But in addition, sustainable power. And what you all have uh, accomplished in Europe, 100% renewable, uh, is, is, is incredible. It's the pride of Cyrus One sustainability platform. And, and we're excited, but to get there and to be able to plan out to 24, 25, 26, 27, and know that you're going to have enough utility, sustainable, renewable utility, that is requires relationships with utility providers. It requires approaches that are a little bit unique because these resources are constrained and and people are waking up to the fact that there is this uh, significant pull on those resources. And so land is more competitive in the more uh, dense areas. Utility is scarce. Uh, and you mentioned OFCI. And look, there's only so many manufacturers of breakers uh, and, and mechanical electrical equipment. And everyone's fighting for the same gear, whether you're a large utility or whether you're a data center. And so, yes, we are, uh, that has become a strategic part of our business. We're actually buying two years out, uh, making material financial commitments to our suppliers. If you are a smaller company, that's going to be difficult to do. But if you're able to give orders uh, or uh, POs to some of these manufacturers to the extent we and, and probably some of our peers are doing, you're going to be in a better position and a higher probability of beating the supply chain challenge. But a smaller company, it's, it, you, know, you might have land and utility. I don't know how you're going to build a data center without mechanical electrical gear. It's just, it's impossible. That's so interesting because you've kind of hit why Cyrus One's able to differentiate itself with the scale of its balance sheet. And I guess that's, that's enhanced in a private capacity. Um, you've touched on why it's harder for smaller companies. But I think that last point's were worthy of further discussion in that, you know, for a smaller company, when land values in some parts of the world might be reaching $12 million an acre, um, and we're talking about having to develop at scale, therefore potentially sites of 20 to 30 acres requiring significant capital outlay because customers demand, you know, site to ownership. And then with the requirement to pre-order OFCI to be able to deliver within reasonable timeframes. I mean, it's a, pre it's a pretty daunting business model unless you're at scale. It is. And, um, you know, if you're not at scale and you're not building all of these capacities at once or in, in, in one project phase or large, very large project phase phases, your unit cost, if you get down to the kilowatt, uh, it's astronomical. And so in order to get to a place where you can offer your customer a competitive price, you really have to be doing these things at large scale. So your, your price at each and every level comes down when you're building at scale. And, you know, the things driving this market right now, which is just, you know, massive cloud adoption, 
artificial intelligence, 5G, robotics, all of these things are not stopping. They are at the very beginning where, you know, in baseball terms, we're in the first inning still of some of these things, maybe the third inning of cloud adoption. Uh, but the newer technologies I referenced, we're, we're at the beginning. We haven't seen the, the, the explosion in data that we're about to see. And so you have to get to scale from a cost perspective, but just in order to satisfy what's coming. I guess, Dave, that frames your enthusiasm for the industry because, you know, you founded the company over 20 years ago. I think it's probably fair to say, although you comment that I don't think you envisage would be where we were today um, in terms of facing this cliff of growth. Um, but I guess you're glad you stuck with it. You're glad we, you stuck with the industry. I know Cyrus One's extremely glad you stuck with them. You know, back in the day, we looked at Moore's Law, Moore's Law, Moore's Law. How are we going to predict the future? Um, and, and we never thought Moore's Law would, 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 would triple um, and then quadruple. And, and so, first of all, I am, I am, I, I've always had a passion for the industry. I've always had a, a great passion for, for the people at Cyrus One. And, and so thrilled I've always, always stayed involved um, uh, from an advisory perspective while I was not part of the team thrilled to be back as part of the team and I definitely don't see the demand or the need for Cyrus One. The problem we solve is still relevant and I think that's what's most exciting about any entrepreneur. You start as an entrepreneur and you say, am I solving a real problem? And, and I can still say that Cyrus One is solving real problems. They're just really big problems now. Yeah, indeed. So we have, we turn now to a pretty serious topic, which is sustainability. Um, and I guess I wanted to ask your view of what's, what's driving Cyrus One's sustainability agenda? Is it customers? Is it regulation? Or is it because we feel it's the right thing to do? Or, or indeed, is it something else? Well, I'm, I'm going to check all of the above. Fundamentally, it's the right thing to do. I mean, we're all living in a world where we're, we're reminded more and more uh, frequently about the, the, the realities of, 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 of what's happening with climate. And, you know, customers are also, they are very, very, very focused on this because according to Gartner, by 2025, customers, more than 90% of organizations are going to be making cloud-based decisions based on sustainability records of, 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 of providers. So our customers are extremely focused, hyper-focused, hyper-scale um, on, on our ability to help them uh, to attract customers. And, and so that's one data point that, that we see. So it's not only our customers, it's our customers' customers are focused on this. And so what we see is um, you know, carbon emissions of hyperscale cloud services are really, really, really a big focal point as companies are adopting the cloud. Um, the other thing uh, I, I can say is when it comes to regulatory environment, the regulatory environment is, is, is always something we have to keep ahead of. Um, when you build a data center, you're making very, very long-term decisions. These are assets that are in place for many, many years, like the power plants of, of, our, of our parents. Um, you need to do it right, and you need to make sure that you're in compliance and you're going to stay in compliance for both your customers and the regulators. So the regulatory environment is always going to be important. So your designs have to be future-proofed, and your customers are important. But at the end of the day, we employ lots of people. And, and, and there's one theme of people at Cyrus One. They want to know we're doing the right thing. And so as a company, the tone at the top has always been, let's get ahead of this. Completely agree. So just drilling down, just, just on one small point. So from a regulatory perspective, what do you anticipate? Look, we anticipate the regulatory environment is never going to get easier. It, it's just it, it, the regulatory environment has forward. They don't have a reverse. And so especially in these key markets when you're dealing with water, when you're dealing with air quality, when you're dealing with all the things that people are paying attention to. Uh, the more and more data centers that are being deployed, the more and more people are waking up, and the more and more that's going to translate to political and regulatory pressure. And so we do not anticipate, nor do we plan for, the regulatory environment easing up. 
And so we think about design. How do we, how do we, how do we then solve that riddle? Um, it's a riddle. It's tough. It's all about the design and, 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 and really staying on top of new technologies that could help us uh, to, be, to, be, uh, to stand out. But the regulatory environment, to be very, very specific, is not, is not going to let up. Yeah. I mean, from a U- European viewpoint, I, Dave, I completely agree with you. I just hope there's, uh, there's some room for self-regulatory initiatives, which I think there probably are. And obviously, you know, you and I together are, are big advocates of that. Um, but it's interesting. So just, again, picking up on a few things, you know, what we're boiling down to. So we talked about the need to develop at scale, but the need to develop sustainable data centers at scale. You've touched on some design issues, but you know what? What, what do you think is going to change? Um, you know, is it is it increased densities? You, you know, are, are we moving towards you know free air cooling? Where are we going? Do you think with the the broader design of data centers? What are they going to look like in your view? Or do you well, hope they're going to? Well, I mean, like? yeah. I mean, look fundamentally. Uh, everything you mentioned has to be uh, approached. We, we, we're in closed loop, so we're water neutral in many, many markets. You know, we, we are obviously focused on renewable energy. We're looking now in certain markets at, you know, battery storage as primary power to where you can, you can actually have battery storage and use, you know, the, the grid as a, as a backup. That's many years out, but we're already talking to some of our partners through our new investors that, that have these types of of, of storage plants that could potentially really change the design of a data center from a power perspective. From a cooling perspective, we've got to remove the heat. I mean, let's let's not forget. I mean, we're 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 basically millions of little furnaces burning in these data centers called processors, and they kick out a ton of heat, and we have to remove the heat. And certain markets, I think there's going to be some free air cooling. Other markets, it's closed loop systems. But in any scenario, we've got to trap the heat. We don't want to contaminate the cool air. We need extreme efficiencies to remove the heat. And so there's lots of new technologies and designs. Um, unfortunately, not so much at the chip level. It, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's at the data center to minimize the heat and, and, and make sure that we are able to be efficient. But everything is on the table, whether it be roof design, whether it be how we get our utility, whether it be, do we go with natural gas type generators versus diesel? We're looking at uh, other types of, of, of backup power solutions, and we're seeing some, some people try different things, but it's just not quite at scale yet. So when we look at these different new technologies, uh, there's a lot of things out there that are coming out that can do small scale. We need large scale. So we're pushing quite a few manufacturers to, to get to scale with respect to some of these new sustainable opportunities. From a design perspective, we have been ahead of the design curve at Cyrus One forever. That's always been our claim to fame. And so, you know, we feel like density um, really, really helps. We've been in the density business for uh, as long, longer than anybody. And so we feel really, really, really good about how to manage and operate high dense data centers, whether it be super power density or just, you know, massive scale. So Dave, I think, there's no doubt we can optimize development costs. I think through the debate on the headwinds, it'd be nice if uh, we can see some help from the market as it relates to certain of those headwinds, including inflation. Uh, there's, there's no question. We, uh, we're having strategic conversations with our customers. We're such a transparent organization that as, as these changes have occurred, we are focused on uh, working with our customers strategically to make sure uh, we can still satisfy what they need, uh, but also take care of our, our other stakeholders. And so um, all of these things have to be kind of wrapped together and delivered to multiple different stakeholders. And so we look at all of these inputs, including, uh, unfortunately, the supply chain and inflation right now, but we do it in a transparent way. We don't know what the outcome will be, I don't think anybody really does. We do it openly and in, in, in the spirit of we're, we're really all working together. Dave agreed. But I think what we're talking about is not just the data center of the future, but the data center industry of the future. So Dave, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. 
I hope our listeners enjoyed the conversation and took as much from our conversation as I did. We very much hope you'll join us again on our podcast, Cyrus One Connects. Thank you, Matt. I enjoyed the conversation. And that concludes Series 1 of Cyrus One Connects. It's been an honour to speak with colleagues and peers on the issues affecting our industry, digging deep and working out what we're doing well and where we can grow and move forward. From sustainability to the skills gap and everything in between, we've only just scratched the surface in terms of the issues touching and influencing the data centre industry. So we look forward to continuing the conversation in Series 2. On behalf of me... Matt Pullen and everyone at Cyrus One, thank you for listening. Please do share on social and tag Cyrus One. Like, comment, and use the hashtag Cyrus One Connects. And if you have any ideas for future topics, we'd love to hear them. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon.